I am Laura Vitale, and this is my husband, Joe. We created Laura in the Kitchen about four and a half years ago, and it's now one of the most popular cooking channels on YouTube. She had a crazy idea one day was, I want to write a cookbook. And I said, well, we could do that, but uh, we'll spend our life savings publishing it. You'll probably sell eight copies to your friends that are interested, and then you'll have about 992 copies sitting around that you haven't sold. And she says, well, how about a TV show? I'd love to have a TV show. And again, you can't just go knock on you know, TV's door and say, hey, can I get a TV show and expect them to say yes, because there's thousands of people doing that. So then we had this crazy idea to build a kitchen studio in our, ba in our basement of our house. And um, that's where we filmed Laura in the Kitchen. That's where it started. Before we uploaded, we didn't know what we should be posting. So we actually went into Google and used autocomplete as our analytics at the time. So we literally typed in how to make, and then the letter A, and then how to make in the letter B. And that's where bruschetta came from as the first episode. As we went on, we decided to take a look at who we were reaching the most. And it was no surprise, it was 13 to 17 year olds were on the platform more than, than most people at the time. And then we started trying to figure out who should we be targeting in, if, with this show? Who are, who's the audience that we're really interested in? And to be honest, the 13 to 17 year old category made sense because we didn't feel like they were watching cooking shows on television. We felt that this was the audience that would grow up with Laura. So we actually started um, running ad campaigns against videos that were really resonating with that audience. So we started our channel in January of 2010 and in the summer of 2011 thought, you know, I'm really building my audience. At the time we had about 20,000 subscribers. We were uploading about once or twice a week. That's when we came home and I said, I want to upload every single day. I want to upload a new recipe every day for as long as I possibly can um, just to build my library. Anytime somebody searched for something, I wanted to be what came up. So whether it was brownies or pizzas or cinnamon roll, whatever it was, I wanted to be the result. So that's what we did. We uploaded every single day for nine months and um, we built a really good library. And I think at the time we had a couple hundred thousand subscribers and then we thought, okay, we can scale it down to every other day. And that's the current schedule we have now is every other day. And when it comes to getting ready to film an episode, it kind of starts with an idea. First of all, I think about the time of year and then I see what my audience has been requesting. I see what's trending. I see what people are pinning. I see what people are searching for. These are my apple fritters. They are to die for. I see what's really popular that I can maybe do a twist on. So I take all of that into consideration. So that takes me and we film in bulk. We don't film one episode here and there. We'll film for two days and we'll film enough content to have for about two weeks or so. It takes me about a week to come up with the recipes that we want to film and then I have to test the recipes. If it's something that I've made before over and over again, there's no need to test it. But if it's a recent recipe that I had like this crazy idea for, I'll kind of get in the kitchen and I'll start playing around, see what works, what doesn't. So I think from the very beginning to the day that the episode goes live, it's about a week. We knew from day one what we wanted this format to be. In fact, we actually sat down and watched several other cooking shows to see how they intro their show. and to see if there were any patterns that we really thought we liked. And as far as the format of the show and the, and the way it's outlined, it was very utility, it made sense. Go over the ingredients first. Mm -hmm. That way you're not getting into something without having everything laid out in front of you. And a lot of, in, on television, you don't see that a lot. You don't see it laid out that way, the way we do it, because we expect people to be watching on their iPad or on their, on their mobile device in their kitchen. We've gotten to a point where we know what the audience likes, what they don't like, what they're going to respond well to what they're not. So I, we, of course, I take that in consideration when it comes to what recipes I'm going to choose. But then we're also kind of now at the point where we know what's going to perform best and when. For example, on Saturdays, you got to post something sweet. People have time to bake. So we know that something like a cake or a muffin is going to perform really well starting from the thumbnail because now they get up on Saturday mornings, they see that chocolate cake. It might need a couple hours to set, but they have the time in the day, so it makes sense to post it on Saturdays. The thumbnails are always kind of similar in terms of they're on a, back, on a white background because it's the thumbnail is as big as a postage stamp, so you need to be able to just see the dish. If it's got a beautiful cup and silverware and a beautiful plate, it doesn't really work for a thumbnail. So we might have to retake that picture several times in order for it to look right. But that's really, really important. And I'd say we average about 50 thumbnails before we get the mm -hmm. one we want every time we shoot. And, we, and we, the food in the thumbnail is the food that was made yeah, in the I episode. It's not that. a second dish. It's the identical. So when you, when you see a thumbnail, yeah. you're actually going to watch that dish be made as opposed to 
something that was yeah. and you know, sat through hours of beautification. That's really important to, to me because I don't want people to be like, well, mine doesn't. Why is that one look so amazing? But this doesn't look that way. I want it to be, you, you're going to get what you see. We actually have a subscriber counter, which I made myself. <laughs> that's a big four, four inch uh, a numeric counter that sits in our kitchen. And it updates every half an hour to show us how many subscribers we have because we want our subscribers to know how important they are to us that they actually mm -hmm. have a place in our home. If I had to measure the um, engagement in levels, I'd say a view is at the bottom. I mean, obviously it's important, but that's the first measurable uh, piece of success. So a view, then a like, then a share, then a comment, then going out on social media and finding someone who made the dish and recreated it. That's the top. That's the ultimate mm -hmm. measurement of success because at that point you have change somebody's behavior and you have people who are that engaged and mm -hmm. that interested in what you're doing that, that that when you see something the six hours after you posted it and someone else has already gone and recreated it, there's just something special about that.